Sharon. I'm joking. <laughs> Sorry. I was like, it's happening. It's happening. It's up. Oh. We hope that she approves of how we did our faces today. Because we did put some effort into this. Of course, it's like the, the glamour edition. <laughs> it is the glamour edition. Drink your collagen, drink your kombucha, be healthy, live yeah. well, and hopefully we'll make you laugh. Let's get it. It's Throwback Thursday time with April and Mercedes. Welcome to Throwback Thursday time. I'm Mercedes Yvette. And I am April Wilkner. Today's guest is Sharon Womack. Sharon is a MAC cosmetics makeup artist who is known for doing such celebrity faces as EJ Johnson. And also an advocate for hashtag girls like us, a hashtag created by Janet Mock, meant to empower trans women of color. I hear a doorbell. Oh, she's already here? Yes. Oh, wow. All right, well, let's welcome her. This is our first invisible guest introduction. <laughs> oh, love the no! walk-in. Gorgeous. Compete with that. First of all, I love your runway uh, walk-in. <laughs> no, I was eating watermelon and I was like, oh my God, I dropped my fork. Are they there yet? <laughs> Hi, how are you, Angels? You both look so beautiful. Oh, so do yeah. you. Welcome to Throwback Thursday. You both look a little cocktaily, honey. These dresses, honey, art behind you. Mercedes, are those your eyes behind you? No, those are Angelina's. Jolie. Those are beautiful. Those I are wish beautiful. they were mine. Thank you. <laughs> I got a Buddha. Yeah. What oh, are you okay, drinking, Sharon? Uh, you're, listen, Sharon is drinking a cold brew from Starbucks. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. You know I, what I'm I, drinking? What are you drinking? Collagen. <laughs> I have kombucha. <laughs> oh, I love kombucha. I have right. kombucha every night with dinner. Oh, oh nice. It gets, does it get you a little tipsy at all? If, if I want to get tipsy, I'm a champagne girl or tequila, but. Ooh, <laughs> classy <laughs> and savage. It's bad, tastes like sugar, but ain't she sweet. Savage, yes. <laughs> love to jump right into your throwback photo, which is a surprise for you. Okay. So please, Sharon, walk us through this moment in time by makeup styling and then we definitely need the scoop on that handsome young man on your arm as well <laughs> it was 2003 i was lucky enough to be cast in this movie called wasabi tuna with antonio sabata jr who is in the photo uh anna nicole smith jason london alana eubank tim meadows there were so many wonderful actors in the movie um and it was a beautiful moment. So that was the premiere of the movie. Yeah. And um, my dress at that time was actually Betsy Johnson. It was a huge Betsy Johnson thing. Knew it. <laughs> we knew it. Mercedes had a very similar one in a different color. <laughs> so I, I love Betsy Johnson. And um, I was still fresh in my body, you know. So I'm, as you can tell, my breasts were very new. <laughs> they just looked perky to us. <laughs> So my breasts were very new, and the dress was so fitted, but I love that she used those kind of stretchy knit materials. So um, I wore that dress, and I didn't have a lot of time to get myself ready, because um, I had some other friends who were getting ready, and they were like, we need your help, we need lashes put on. I had no time to put lashes on, so I just kind of threw on kind of a California bronzy bead, yeah. and uh, that, that was it. And I had, And the shoes at the time, were Jimmy Choo, because I was so excited about Sex in the City, so I had a pair of Jimmy Choo shoes. Hmm. So in the fashion game, you killed it. Okay, Betsy Johnson was at the top of her game in yeah. 2003. The, yeah. the uh, slip dress was huge. I mean, Kate Moss started it, and we followed after. And I love that you did more of a natural look, you know, um, on the red yeah. carpet. Yeah. I felt like because I had transitioned to become the woman that I am. I didn't want to be so over the top. Um, I learned from a book um, that Kamara Lee Simmons has. I don't know if you guys ever read it about it. It's called Being Fabulous or something like that, or Fabulous Life. She always said we should wear color and we should um, stand out and be noticed. And um, back then though, I was just about subtlety. You mm -hmm. know, the dress was enough. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Well, makeup has definitely played such a huge role in empowering women in the past 20 years. Um, as a trans woman and a makeup artist, what do you think um, the changes you've seen in the industry and in people in general? Well, the funny thing about the early 2000s throwback, um, it wasn't as important to wear a ton of makeup. It was important to look like the best version of yourself. Um, celebrityism has changed because we see more celebrities on the cover of magazines now when before we saw models at, like yourself, you beautiful goddesses. Um, and then what happened was Instagram, selfies, Facebook, all those things. I was doing selfies for Facebook and even for MySpace back in the day when there was MySpace. I'm, I don't My know if you, you Yes. <laughs> We were grown ass <laughs> women in 2003. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hello. The most, and still the most beautiful women today. And you don't, you, neither one of you ages. So that's a blessing. And you too. Are you drinking oh, collagen? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, no collagen, but listen, you know, the more melanin deep your skin is, as you all know, I, I'm, I'm really 46 now, 46 and, you know, fabulous. So yes. Wow. Okay. Is this as of recent? Did you just have a birthday? No, I'll be 47 in September. You look twenty to that. I'm not this even kidding. Amazing. You said if you said you were 27, I wouldn't have bat an eye. Oh my god. Oh my god. I love you both so much. Thank you. It's it's really just coming to a point in your life where you're grateful. You know, once you really become grateful for who you are and what you've been through, you don't have the same worries and stresses. And I think that's what really ages us more than anything, you know. So that's been a blessing to go through all that I've been through and to come out of it being the happiest, most grateful woman that I could be. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I want to, <laughs> beautiful. Um, it is. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about Pose because I know you have been also involved with doing some of the makeup for the icons who are on that show. And for me, it's very interesting to see the evolution of how trans women have been portrayed in the media over the last 20 years. So wh what are your thoughts about that, about what was going on back then in the early 2000s and then now on a show like Pose? I think back then I was doing everything that I possibly could to be stealth. And what stealth meant back then was um, kind of undetectable because I didn't want anything to happen to me. I just wanted to be the most beautiful black woman that I could be so that society would accept me. Um, at that time, I was working at Saks Fifth Avenue, so I had a ton of beautiful women that I was surrounded with. And I didn't really have any trans friends. I was surrounded by beautiful women who knew what it was to be a woman. And that's how I learned to become the woman that I am. So back then, I didn't even really know what trans was. I just knew that I was supposed to be in this body since I was four years old. With Pose coming out, which is such a blessing, um, unfortunately, it, fortunately and unfortunately, it made me had to come out to let the world know that I am a transgender woman. And um, like I said, that's a good thing, but it's also been kind of a scary thing because Right now, so many Black trans women are being killed. Um, every day there's a new one, and it's heartbreaking. But I have to say who and what I am now because I need to stand up and fight for us. Pose is a great show for that because it shows the truth. I've been through so many of the experiences that a lot of those women have been through. I was never in the ball scene. I was a pageant girl. So I, that's why I was makeup, makeup, makeup is so important to me. Yeah. But, um Working with Angelica and Janet Mock, it's so funny, I actually um, have Janet's book here. I just um, finished reading it. It's um, Redefining Realness. And I'm on her second book right now. You know, Janet is actually one of the produ producers and directors of the show. Yeah. But um, I've worked with Lady J, who's one of the writers and producers. And um, Angelica is one of the greatest loves of my life. But Janet and Angelica, um, I do their makeup. I have done their makeup quite often. And they're such powerful forces. So. Now, not having to live stealth is wonderful because I don't get scared that somebody might um, hurt me, but 
I do get scared for the girls who aren't what we call passable because in the beginning of a transition, you have so many awkward moments. You have so many um, emotions that are going on because of being on hormones, first of all. Sometimes you have families who don't want you, which is why you see in Pose that they create these beautiful houses and kids come to these houses. I and um, oh, I'm so sorry. I love the idea of that to, to see yeah. that you can create your own family in your own home was such a beautiful thing that, you know, was going on. Yeah. And yeah. so that, that is wonderful because it really does exist. There are those beautiful families out there. So uh, working with those women has been empowering because it's allowed me to be myself. It's allowed me to see that it is fine to actually say, I am a transgender woman. This is who I am. I need you to respect me. I don't need you to love me, but I need you to respect me because my journey has not been easy. But I am living in this body as a black woman now. And uh, this is who I am authentically. So please appreciate and respect me. Did you feel any different, um, you know, after Black Lives Movement, Movement started again recently? And yeah. I mean, I felt different as a, a Black woman, half Black woman, um, just dealing with, just seeing like more people come up and be accountable and, being able to give us the space that we need. Did you feel any different or? You know what's funny about it? I grew up in Alabama, but I also grew up Mormon. And I've always grown up in predominantly white areas. So although I am a black woman, grown up a black boy, it's so strange to say this growing up in Alabama, I never experienced racism until I moved. To I hear Los that all the time. Yeah. And the funny thing about it is when I got here in 2001 and you speak properly like all of us are, people would say things like, why do you talk like that? So I experienced it more from people of color oh. than I did from my Caucasian friends because that's all that I knew. I'd only dated white men. I'd only, I love black men, please don't get me wrong. I have, I just unfortunately ended a beautiful relationship with a black man that I love very much. But I think that, um, not, not, I don't wanna, di I, I digress. What I wanna say is the movement now is important. It's more important than ever, but I think now it really is going to change things because it is the generation Zers and the millennials who are fighting in a different way. They're fighting in a way that is, we want justice now. And if it's not done, we'll do anything we need to by any means necessary to make that happen. That is what I love about it. So my past, I didn't even recognize racism because I didn't really know what racism was, which sounds horrible being a black person. No, but that's, I mean, you're very fortunate. That's not the case for a lot of women yeah. and trans women. Yeah. You know, and so I'm grateful being that I was raised Mormon and came from a very educated family. You know, my mother's a nurse, my stepfather is an architect, my brother is a doctor, my sister is a nurse. Um, education was something that was very important to my family. So my mom said, if you carry yourself in a certain way, you will always be okay. Mm -hmm. You know, That's good. and just remember who you are, you know. I really, I really relate to what you're saying about that you didn't experience racism, you know, growing up Mormon in the South and, and you didn't experience it until you came here. And also I think I'm picking up on like some of the feelings around that because I also felt that way. I, I think when we were on Top Model, the producers kept trying to like force me to wave this Asian flag and talk about my experiences with discrimination. And I quite honestly, at that point in my life, didn't have any. And there's a little bit of this guilt, I think, that comes with that when you haven't, but you, you have to be honest about what your experience was, right? Yeah, exactly. April, I love that you said that because um, a lot of people, it scares me sometimes to tell my story because just like you, I'm sure with the producers, you're like, well, is this my fight? It is my fight as a black woman but I just do it in a different way, I guess. 
yeah. I guess it's in being completely present in who I am and uh, loving the skin I'm in and um, trying to do everything that I possibly can just to allow people to look at us and respect us as Black people, as women, um, as a beautiful Asian goddess like yourself. And you being a beautiful brown skinned girl who is biracial, the fight that we all have, Asian, Latino, you know, mix, mulatto, whatever it is, it's, it is a fight, but it just depends on how we, we do it, I guess. I, I don't know. I, I wish I had all more answers. No, I, you know? I think you being honest and saying how you feel is definitely making other people feel more comfortable in their own skin and being able to share their story. I think that's, that's what this is about. If we were to switch gears a little bit, shake yeah. it off. <laughs> uh, you want to spice it up and play a little game? Let's do it. All right. So uh, April and I love to play games uh, and we came up with a game which is called Two Truths, One Lie, where you tell us three things about yourself and one of them is a lie. And okay. this is our makeup edition. And it'll test our knowledge of makeup. We think yeah. you might dump us. So we're hoping to learn something from you. Oh my gosh, I love you both so much. You should always do your eye makeup before you do your face makeup. Always do your eye makeup before your face makeup. Got it. Okay. Um, hairspray is one of the best setting sprays you can actually use. For your face? You might be surprised, honey. <laughs> okay. okay. And, um, uh, and everybody, as much as they don't feel like it, does look good in a red lipstick as long as it fits the undertone of their skin. Okay. Ooh. Well, I know for a fact, Mac goes on, they always do the eyes first. So I know that's the truth. And oh I man, know, I was you, so, honey. <laughs> I was so positive that was the lie. Now I got to pivot. Okay. Unless, um, unless you changed your ways, but I. No, I, I, that's how I do makeup. So yes, that's, I, that's a truth to me. <laughs> okay. I would have failed this if you hadn't given Oh, me that was going to be your lie. You thought that was the lie? I thought it's too hard to get your foundation close to your eye after, I don't know. I, I clearly don't know makeup, so yeah. Well, I, I learned a lot of my it. stuff from Sharon. So I'm gonna say number two is a lie because who the hell wants to put hairspray on their face? <laughs> it's true. But, it's like, true. but I bet people were like, oh, definitely hairspray. Yeah, that's a great <laughs> idea. <laughs> it holds stuff in place, so maybe why not your makeup? Yeah. I know. Well, the funny thing is, okay, it is a lie, but guess what? Back in the day before I became the woman that I am today, I used to do drag. My name was Mahogany Christie. Oh, yes. <laughs> From the house of Christie, because they told you I was a pageant girl. And it's so funny, when you when you pulled up the picture of Antonio and I, I thought you were going to pull up the picture of me in drag. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, but as Mahogany Christie, a lot of the drag queens back then in pageants would use Aquanet so that they wouldn't, but you should never do that because it will yeah. clog your pores. It's the worst thing in the world for your yeah. skin. If anyone's watching this, please, please, please don't do that. If everyone's watching this, please don't do that. Yeah. I do remember Aquanet though. I would use that. There, It was a specific smell. It was like so, it was so it like calm. <laughs> but I'll tell you why we chose the photo we did because Mercedes and I had our little like, Woo! Moment in time because we both remember the first time we laid eyes on Antonio Sabato Jr.'s face. It was in the Janet Jackson black and white video yeah. for Love Will Never Do Without You. Yeah, her Brits did that video. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, yeah. That, he's a great photographer. Black and white. I, he stopped me dead in my tracks. He's been a definite long-term throwback crush of mine. So we were giddy that you had a photo with him. I <laughs> Are you gonna pop out of your closet or something? I have um a, 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 when we worked together, he was in InStyle magazine. When InStyle magazine was newer and like glossy and delicious, he was in it and he did this beautiful um boxing shoot spread where he was in these gorgeous like satin trunks and his muscles i have to and so when i got on set and we were in this movie together he signed this picture for me in, in style 
you know, he's a totally different man now. He's very Republican, very, you know, Donald Trump supporting. He's a different man wow. now. And don't get me wrong, if you love Donald Trump, you love Donald Trump. I don't care. The most important thing to me is that we love everybody. That's it. <laughs> but yeah, so he's he's very, I don't know if that's left wing or right wing, right wing now, but yeah, he's a totally different man than he used to be. Wow. We need to yeah. take him back to his roots, okay? <laughs> Come back, Antonio. Come, Come back. On back to us. <laughs> Well, at that time, he had just gone through, I think he'd just gone through a divorce with Virginia Madsen. Oh. Wow. Yeah, and they have a gorgeous child together. He's got to be in his 20s now. Wow. There's yeah. There's still hope, April. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't think the politics and I would blend, but that's okay. Um, oh, gosh. Um, well, listen, the greatest thing about who we are as women is that we're so powerful in our intuition and the things that we say and do with men. And a man's mind can be changed quite easily when he learns to love a woman, you know? 100%. So April, please help us. <laughs> I'm just saying, work my Asian voodoo on him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Conjure up a spell. <laughs> You're a genie now. <laughs> Um, okay. Uh, so we also, we love to wrap up our show with, sometimes it's deep, sometimes it's fun and light, but we always have a closing question for our guests. And for you, Sharon, we wanted to know who is still on your dream to-do list for your client? Who you, whose face would you want to do makeup on that you have yet to? Michelle Obama. I knew it. <laughs> You're so good. <laughs> I have been fortunate enough to have worked on You Would Scream, Rebecca Gayhart, Rose McGowan, Mercedes. <laughs> I've worked on Julia Roberts. I've worked on Kirsten Dunst. I've worked on, so I even got to touch up Oprah, which is a blessing. Oh my gosh. Working for EJ and the Johnsons is always wonderful. Magic and Cookie, they're my world. Um... But there's something about Michelle Obama. Her energy is so beautiful. And I would just love to be in her presence. And doing her makeup would be a wonderful gift because then I would just be able to maybe get some of that beautiful energy from osmosis. <laughs> you know? yes. And she would get yours in return too. Oh yeah. my God, she I would love you both. Thank you. Lucky to have you. Thank you. We're going to put that out there in the universe. That's also why we wanted to ask you because we're, we're going to make it happen. Next. All right, honey. Thank you. Yes. So our TT fam always wants to know where they can follow you and learn more about what you're up to and what you're doing. Okay. I am on Instagram and I am at I am Sharon um, on Instagram. It's so nice catching up with you. You always look ageless and beautiful and we're so lucky to have you come on. Thank you. I mean, April, you look like a goddess, but having you in my life, Mercedes, has been a blessing because you really are such light and love. You're still in my portfolio, by the way. Oh, nice. <laughs> I feel honored, especially <laughs> after the, the guest list you, you listed off. I'm like, oh, if I could just be still be there, that's wonderful. No, you listen, you're such one of the most beautiful women on the planet. Oh, thanks. Right. Right next to Michelle Obama. Yeah. <laughs> Just put me next to her. I want to catch that vibe too. <laughs> you like I come in? Hopefully she'll be able to see this amazing show. We'll put it in the universe. And she'll be able to actually meet the two of you goddesses. I That's how feminine you. energy works, yes. you know. We oh, just gotta I keep putting it out there. Yeah. yeah. I oh. told um, April uh, about like choosing a makeup artist and how I met you. I said, I found the most beautiful woman in the store. And I looked at her makeup and I said, I want to look just like that. And that's how I found oh you. <laughs> you. I love you. I love you. I've always wanted to be as beautiful as you, but you're so much more beautiful inside too. You're just a beautiful woman. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. We all best. are. I love yes, you. We all thank are. you so much for coming yeah. on. I was going to say, we, you know, obviously we can't all be in the same room when we do Throwback Thursday. So we're doing everything over Zoom. But I know Mercedes and I, we always feel when there's an extra warmth and a glow from our guests, like you feel it in your heart and you you give us that feeling. Just I'm getting, getting goosebumps. Yeah, no, I knew she'd be feeling it too. That's why I know I can say it. You are a light and we, we feel your presence. And so that's 
to us, that's the best kind of guest we can have on into our oh, home. Thank gosh. you. I love you, ladies. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In Kundalini Yoga, we say Sat Nam. So Sat Nam to both of you. Yeah. Sat Nam. Let's Sat Nam with our drinks then. Which yes! Let's so. Sat Nam and Namaste. Namaste Sat Nam. <laughs> Oh, she was great. I mean, such an eloquent speaker. Oh, great one, great one. You're so right. When you go to MAC to get your makeup done, you taught me this. You look at the makeup that the makeup artist has, and hers is always so beautiful yes. and natural, so that's why you chose her, because you know right. that's how you're yeah. gonna have your makeup. Always look at what they do to themselves, because if it looks like tragedy, that's the way you're gonna walk out. <laughs> Gosh, I didn't know that about Antonio Sabato Jr. Yeah, I rem I vaguely remember that after he was she was saying that like that he like took a left turn because my mom told me that. Okay, now I'm like I want to take back all that shit I said about him, but whatever. <laughs> no, well thanks for watching TT Time where we spill the tea. We're coated in the beautiful ray of light that is Sharon, and just sipping up the sunshine and learned never to put Aquanet on our faces. Ever. Ever. <laughs>